Hello and welcome back to Imperion Galactic Survival. My name is Spanch. Welcome to 1.8. Well, you guys overwhelmingly uh, in the comments of the last video asked for a brand new Let's Play series of the vanilla version of Imperion Galactic Survival 1.8. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to start a brand new game in survival. Yeah, we're going to start from scratch here in the brand new update. Okay, so starting a new game. I'll take you guys through it. For those of you that are new to the game, maybe not sure, there are four starting locations, as you can see. Akua, Ninguez, Skillion, Maspron. Now, Akua has gone through a big transformation, has all the new kind of um, foliage and things like that, and is very pretty. But I know from the last video I did that the planet we'll be moving to very soon after we start is also got that. So I'd like to actually experience uh, one of the planets that we haven't done in a long time, and that is Skillion, formerly known as Omicron. And I think this is going to be quite interesting. These have got the new little robot things floating around on them as well. As the new foliage thing, but it must less because it's obviously a, a desert planet. So we're going to start on Skillion. Um, I'll just randomize the seed there. <laughs> and then it changes it back again. Just be aware of that. Then we're going to go into the difficulty settings here. Now, difficulty setting is just set to medium. Now, if you don't know, you can actually click on that, and then you get this huge array of customization settings. And these are the ones I recommend. Degradation speed, set that to slow. Um, amount of ore deposits, rich, because, um, you know, I don't like mining that much. So I'd rather get more out of my mining trips than, than less, if you know what I mean. Number of deposits as well, plenty. Um, auto miners deplete, false. And enemy difficulty are just set on medium because this basically is like how bullet spongy do you want your enemies? How many bullets do you want to shoot them with? I don't want to shoot them with a huge amount, but I'm going to increase the drone presence to high and the base attacks to high just to add a little extra difficulty. But I'd like more enemies that are just normal to kill rather than just bullet sponges. Um, just to double back onto this auto miner deplete things, auto miners are little devices you can put over resource deposits that will automatically mine them as the name suggests. If um, if the depletion is set to true, those auto miners will dig up the entire deposits and then you'll have to move them. Now if you're setting up a permanent base somewhere and setting up auto miners, then you're gonna run out of deposits on that planet and that base is gonna become fairly redundant. So you set it to false and you've basically got infinite resources there, which, you know, when you say it like that, it sounds a bit cheesy, but trust me, it's good. Constructor craft speed, I set to uh, fast, uh, blueprint and repair speed again fast not instant although instant is perfectly acceptable to be honest you've spent the time getting the resources into the factory to then wait an arbitrary amount of time just seems a bit unnecessary for the purpose of this let's play i'm going to set it to instant blueprint spawn limit is false this is uh gonna this will limit the types of ships that you can spawn depending on what um like size class um and stuff like that how big they are um, block limit for certain devices I'm going to set to false as well this arbitrarily sets limits on the amount of guns that you can have on a ship um, and things like that so false don't care check moss uh, moss check mass and volume <laughs> uh, I'm going to set to true and CPU points I'm going to set to true these two if you're new to the game just leave them as false get used to the game get used to the other mechanics and then maybe introduce mass and volume for a new game and then once you get used to that then introduce cpu they add some interesting build and play challenges but are not necessarily new player friendly on the flip side you could turn them straight to true straight off the offset and get used to them straight away but you will find the learning curve much steeper with these two enabled this one basically means that you have a, a, a carrying limit and a volume limit in your storages and this one enables a limit on how many devices you can have in a structure, like a ship or a base, based on uh, CPU points, arbitrary points limited uh, per device kind of thing. So it's it's a different, the, it's like the block limit, but it's much freer because this limits arbitrarily on block type. This limits arbitrarily on CPU points overall. So you can have... 25 GAT turrets or whatever, uh, as long as that's within the CPU boundaries of the entire thing. So I prefer CPU points over block limits for sure. Okay, so that's pretty much the difficulty settings that I will generally run with. You're very welcome to use the same ones, but you know, like I said, if you are uh, a new player, you might want to take these last two with a pinch of salt. Okay, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Let's go. 
Oh, here we go, here we go. Welcome to Skillion. This desert, arid, barren, I don't know what type of planet it is. One of them. One of these planets. Okay, so we crash land, we get the black screen of hopes and dreams. Uh, and then we are presented here. Welcome to the hot desert world of Skillion. Now we've got a bit of an interesting one here because I do want to go through the dialogue and stuff. Uh, but the challenge with Skillion is this no, there's no oxygen. There is no oxygen anywhere. So um, let's pick up all of our stuff here because I'm pretty sure something along here is going to be air. No, <laughs> it's not giving us any oxygen tanks whatsoever. Are you mad? Are you actually mad, game? Harsh. That is stupendously harsh. Oh my god. <laughs> I've gone super British. <laughs> uh, there's a little flay things over there. Look at that. Okay, cool. So we probably get a message from Ida any second now. But let's go around and we're going to start off by just collecting these things. Now, the items I've put on my toolbar here. Survival tool, detector, and flashlight. Everything else I've put in my inventory. And then I've put food and bandages on the other end of my toolbar. Um, so, survival tool, the detector, which is funkalicious now, and the flashlight, which we'll need when night comes. Um, but scattered around, we'll see little, like, uh, corn dogs dotted around, and they give you plant protein, and from plant protein, you can make um, more of these. Now, that's under tab to inventory, survival constructor tab up here, because you've got three tabs, so let's not port a bug. Um, so survival constructor make some energy bars now and they're in the output there just leave them there because their perish time doesn't deplete while they're there <laughs> cheeky 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 um, but yeah these things down here will have a perish time and you'll see that perish time is currently 89 and I think that's minutes um, and then the perish time here will stay on 90 because it's in the output very good that um, we can right click our survival tool we can get a radio menu up this thing's got defense mode, salvage mode, and resource mode. Now you'll notice these little rocks around, and they look slightly different from... Well... They don't actually, do they? <laughs> I suppose there's different types of rocks everywhere, but these ones, because they've got a coppery kind of look to them, they are copper-bearing, and we're going to pick them up, definitely. And then we've got... Thank you very much. We've got uh, this one, which is a carbon-bearing rock, a sort of black one that gives us carbon substrate straight off the bat now. That's interesting. Never used to, never used to. Previous versions, we would have to dig up some regular stone and some plant fiber. Here we go, Commander, here's Ida. I am tracking a faint electromagnetic signal not far away. We should investigate as it might be another escape pod or even a trace of the fleet. Please mark the location on the HUD, thank you very much. Ida, all right, moving on. Opportunity is 300 meters that way. Oh yeah, look at that. Grab some more of these like black rocks on the way and more of this. This one's different as well. Silicon. Yeah. Silicon berry. Grab that. Oh hello. Hey, you cheeky little devil. Do we get him? Let's get him. Come here. Defense mode. Oh! <laughs> He's floating. <laughs> oh yeah, it's definitely still Imperion, isn't it? Uh, robot butthole. <laughs> uh, anyway, right, let's move on. We gotta head towards opportunity here. There are so many corn dogs, dudes. We are gonna have food for days. I do have to kind of re uh, keep reminding myself that um, these are plant fibers as well, the little white flowers. That we have a limited oxygen and we need to move fairly quickly and purposefully on uh on skilly and <laughs> just getting distracted by all the new stuff anyway one day those things i'm pretty sure are going to spit fire at you from above <laughs> it's just something ridiculous like that at the moment they don't do anything but uh it's only a matter of time i'm sure anyway let's continue we're going to pick up some more stuff now we've got some iron rocks here let's get some of those there's a big change in the sort of dynamic of the start of the game that some veteran players might find a little odd surprising but I think it's a good one and that is that the recipe for is, is some fire moss scrapings recipe for the survival constructor or portable constructor has changed our routines normally is gather iron build portable constructor and then you know construct giant warships 
and win game. I mean, that's still pretty much the routine, but it's slightly different now. Look at all the rocks that we get. We're getting so many materials. Let's check our weight and volume here. We're at 91 of 60. We've got so much space left. This is awesome. All right, moving on. Another copper rock. This is good. We're probably going to um, need to do this a fair bit in order to get off the ground, as it were, straight away anyway. so. But it's kind of cool that we get these carbon rocks that give us carbon substrate straight off the, straight off the bat. I wonder if we can still make carbon substrate, though. The normal way. Okay, let's head over to Opportunity now. What is that? That is some fire moss that's slightly sticking out the ground some more. So I'm going to use um, Shift to sprint along a little bit, picking up some more plants. Oh, hello. Have I got? Um, I must have a jetpack because I got a suit with oxygen. I suppose that's one thing about Skillion as well. Over Akua, you get a um, a suit with a built-in torch on Skillion. You don't get that on Akua. Without the suit, we would be dead. <laughs> hey, hey, look, a dinosaur. Nice to see these uh, really old models are still in the case of the state of it. <laughs> I mean, look at our new wonderful system with all the flying plants. Doesn't that look wonderful? And then you look at that. <laughs> it's just, wow. <laughs> There's still some work to do. There's still very much some work to do. All right, welcome to Opportunity, apparently. Um, and a strange obelisky thing over there. Okay. Uh, the way in, the way in is here. Hello, way in. We got a core. We can take that out. Right, there's some strong whispering coming from the obelisk. Pro and blah, 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 blah. That's a bit odd, isn't it? Um, there's also radiation. I've only just no really noticed that kind of clackly, crackly noise going on. Um, hit F1. This is our PDA. <laughs> And uh, I've got to be honest, I'm not quite sure what the hell I'm looking at right now. There's the tutorial section. So, read first PDA. This is a task. Thank you very much. Yeah. Personal data assistant. I suppose um, sitting here and reading this on Skillion is not a good idea because I'm running out of air. If <laughs> I just sit here and run. Look, they got, they got video manuals now. That's pretty cool. Video manuals. Look, let's have a little look see what I'm getting started tips. Activate tutorial. Let's go. Pick up all devices, items, Done. and tools Check. around the crash site. Yeah, find edible that. plants and or craft basic food in your survival constructor. See, I told you. You don't need find this. Find or build a weapon. Requires we had one. We portable oh. constructor. Yep. Unlock both in the tech tree. Okay, we haven't done that yet. Harvest wood and mine carbon and build a shelter with the blueprint factory. Ooh. In case you are stuck, check the PDA built-in Empyreopedia. Yep. Most Good. importantly, have fun. The Robinson Protocol will help you out as you explore this world. Watch out for the lake! Don't drive into the lake! <laughs> I've done that so many times on the motorbike. It's just cruising along and a, a lake appears. <laughs> we'll, uh, where to look things up? Uh, yeah. F1. Understood. Yeah, we kind Pick of did up that. all devices, hey. items, and tools around the crash. We've already done that one. Thank Pick you very much. Pick up all devices. What are you items doing? Items and tools. Why are you doing this over and over again? Don't you dare do it again. I will slap you. Right. We okay now? Can we carry on with the game now? <laughs> There's a survival tool video as well, but we've already we've already know how to use the survival tool. But it, it, this is awesome. This is this is great. Hopefully. Uh, to be honest, I mean, it's it's a little lost on me. I don't even know whether it's good or not because I'm I'm so familiar with the game. It has no impact on me. What what the real test is someone who's never played before going through these tutorials um, and seeing whether they're actually good or not. Anyway, solo missions. Um, I guess this is the same stuff. Tales of Tash. Story mission log. See, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. TOT debug. What? I guess that's next step, find the signal source. Reread messages. Location. Uh, that is tracked. I mean, I'm at location. Mission, getting started tips is playable again. <laughs> is it? The problem is I have no current active task. Maybe talk to this person thing, whatever, console. Maybe this will speed things along a bit. Uh, all members of the expedition teams report the responsible base commanders. 
Uh, maximum alert level applies. Important. All vessels. Technical has been informed time since... Wow. Okay. My abilities to read have been seriously compromised, it would seem. So there's nothing else going on in there. There's... Uh, ooh. Tales of Tash. Damaged data pad. Ooh. Let's pick that up. Maybe that'll trigger something. Oh. Yep. Here we go. Damaged private data device found. Reconstruction of the information in the buffered memory has been partially successful. Should the existing data be read out? Yeah, read it. Uh, we have been studying the artifacts for several years now. There are four of them, one obelisk on each moon of this gas giant. We have set up a camp at each artifact and collect data without end, without making any real progress. The most boring job in the galaxy. But what else can you do to get ahead? The Xerox have stationed their Krogham here as protection, they said. More like watchdogs, I think. They think the artifacts could be useful in the fight against the silence, but at the moment, we're in the dark, we're missing something. Alright. Log file added to recovery list. Reconstruction status, 1 of 16. Where can I watch the logs again? No, I don't need to know that. Look, close! Alright. Saving. Hey! These logs are partially corrupted. Maybe we can recover more information if we find more of them in other places. The information in the console might help find these or tell us how to get in contact with the person. Okay, now we talk to the console, do we? Tash Aki Talon. Alright, fine. Uh, well, we're going to need one of these. We're actually going to need two of those. So let's get them building straight away, shall we? The other thing we need to do is hit F3. Go to MISC. And unlock that portable constructor there. While you're there, portable heater as well as usual. Also, go to weapons. Unlock the shotgun or assault rifle. Tools. Unlock the multi-tool. I don't really know why the ore scanner is still in the game. Maybe vanilla still do use the SSOR deposit types. We'll leave it until we know. Um, and that'll do. That'll do for now. Okay. Oh, there's a there's a thing here as well. Oh, yeah. Radiation medicines. Very useful considering we're at 0.2 rad. So if we get to 0.1 rad, we're in trouble. This place needs to be sealed up because it's a little holy at the moment. Um, to make it a viable little base. It's got a nice little solar panel on the roof, though. That's excellent. We just need a solar capacitor and then it'll work. All right. Very good. You know what? It's slightly irritating about this. All the resources are over there. <laughs> this this well, this is in the dunes, and there's nothing in the dunes. Right. We should have a water O2 condenser, so we're going to plop one of them down straight away, like that. What we do need, and I, I should have done this first, actually. Damn. Uh, what we do need is... Um, some fuel. <laughs> we don't have any fuel. So never mind. Let's check actually. Was there a fuel tank on this thing already? There's an O2 tank over here. Uh, I don't see a fuel tank though. The O2 tank is going to be useful because if we can seal this place up, we can pressurize it and we can have air. And we're going to need air. Um, we're down to 157 oxygen. I was sure this place would have a fuel tank. And usually they have some residual fuel in them. But... Uh, Nay, this is a rubbish base full of rubbish. Okay, well, let's use our detector. 220 meters that way, huh? Um, question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay, so there's a few things dotted around that may have fuel in them or something along those lines. Uh, we're going to sit here for a second, though. The reason I got two of these is because they take a, a while to, to get going. Once, once we've fueled them, of course. And I'm going to get two portable constructors here as well. Uh, because we're going to get one basically just working on fuel, hopefully. While the other one we can use to create other stuff. So let's put this guy down on the other side here. Here he is. And we want this stuff. Biofuel, which is plant fibers 10. I can get two biofuel from the plant fibers I have. So let's get that going. And then we can get... One, of, one fuel in each of these, and we can start producing some oxygen. <laughs> in the meantime, let's bunny hop our way over here. The bunny hop is an ancient technique. And um, I'm not even sure if it's still working, to be honest. I do it out of habit now. Which is basically you... You sort of... You press shift, then space. Shift, then space. While holding W. Shift, then space. Um, and the idea is that while your feet are on the ground, you're sprinting. While you're in the air, you let, let go of shift and it allows your stamina to regenerate. Uh, but then you jump at the, the speed of sprinting rather than at the speed of walking. That's jumping at the speed of walking. 
that's jumping at the speed of sprinting. You see, you get a little bit further. Use very little stamina doing it. Um, the bunny hop. Right, we do need a bit of more plant fiber, so I'm looking for the little white flowers. There's a really tiny version of it there. <laughs> I've never seen one that small. They usually look like this, look. I was itty bitty. <laughs> I like that. Size variations on the plants is also actually kind of cool. So let's get a load of plant fiber. There's... What is that over there? There's a... Oh, this is one of the little things on the ping. Things on the ping. Collection point, huh? Refuse pile. Oh. Mine. No, come back. I want your bits. Give me your giblets. Running into the desert, you bastard. Flitty little bug, isn't he? Optronics! Lovely. I mean, this is stuff that will come in useful when we find a trade station. And we need to sell stuff. Hopefully they will buy Optronics. I'm looking at my stats right now. I'm getting a little worried. <laughs> my oxygen is down to 79. Oh! Detox kit. Delicious. And some steel plates. I mean, you know, whatever. Um, the other thing you can do with this sort of stuff is you can switch to salvage mode. No. We can't damage this stuff with a multi-tool. Is it because it's got a core? I was going to say, you can switch to salvage mode and then you can take this stuff apart, but... For whatever reason... They won't let us take this apart. Usually because it's got a core or something, but... Um, I'm not seeing one here at all. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it, there's a core somewhere, and it's preventing us from salvaging it, but whatever. Let's head back, because we need air. And uh, we, we should probably get started on making um, our little hut over here, kind of airtight and, and stuff. Um, first things first, I think we need some way of getting around slightly better. So, a small flying machine, or a small hovering machine, will be ideals. Oh my god. The vultures are circling! <laughs> they know my death is near. I'm tempted to kill this dinosaur, but I fear he might actually just kill me. At 250 health. Okay. Um, you. Gibbs the fuel. Okay. Put one fuel in there. Uh, put one fuel in there. And they're going to take... Uh, basically 100 seconds each to produce, hopefully, oxygen bottles. God damn it, I'm going to die, aren't I? No, I can make some emergency O2 from my water, so uh, I happen to have some purified water in my inventory and from that you can make little O2, emergency O2 bottles and let's take that out because we've only got an output of two so it won't produce them while there's something in the way right, so we can put some more plant fibre in here now and produce uh, another two bottles of fuel this is desperate, this is, isn't it? <laughs> this is very desperate. Uh, okay, everything else can go in there. Meanwhile, we can put the plant fiber, plant protein to use making more of these. It's a thousand, it'll make as many as it can make, and then it'll just cancel the stack. And I guess everything else can go in here. I mean, ideally we need a fridge, right? Otherwise, this stuff just spoils. But there we go. Okay. I got this BIC PDA. What is this? BKI PDA thing. What? Explorer tokens. We can redeem. They, they're useful for hanging on to. We don't really need them at this point, but, you know. Alright, we've got another fuel there. 19 oxygen. Next product in three. Oh, we're okay. We didn't need the emergency O2 after all. Look. We have... two bottles of O2. We can stick them on our toolbar and then from there we can refill our oxygen. <laughs> We're alive! We did it! <laughs> right, we should probably eat something as well while we're at it. Alright. So, immediate concerns of survival were taken care of. We got another... You split stacks by right-clicking on them. And then you can, they just split them in half, by the way, if you were curious. 
So there we go, we've got 10 emergency O2 bottles. We can stick them there now, and uh, that's fine. And we've got 24... You can actually eat these directly from your output so that they never spoil. Shift right click on them will eat them directly from the output. So there's no need to put them on your bar or in your inventory or anything. They will just... They will stay there and they will stay fresh the entire time. It's, it's wonderful. Okay. So we need, a, we need a better way of getting around. There's a lot of like little junk piles and stuff that we need to check out here. So we're going to hit F2. Um, and we're going to look up a little blueprint of mine. My favorite starting SV, the Bolt, does require 246 carbon. One of the things I wanted to check out was how do we make carbon? We can make carbon from crushed stone, it appears. So that's good. We don't even need plant fibers anymore. It's just straight out crushed stone, which is fantastic. Uh, the other thing it needs is 170 copper, 130 silicon, and 88 iron. Which is actually, at this stage of the game, quite significant. However, it is easy to get hold of, it just takes uh, some time. Alright, we've got our emergency O2 on us, it's fine. We're going to head back into the crash site area over here, which is where all the resource rocks were. And we're going to go dig up some more of the, the rocks and stuff, so that we can try and get ourselves uh, that SV, the little bolt. Now... I'm skipping over. A lot of players will go for a small hover vessel, first of all. Um, I've got a few of those as well. There's the Sparky, uh, which is only 100 carbon and 40, 40 and 18. Sparky is a great little thing. There's various vari uh, versions of it I've got as well, uh, which have different degrees of resources required depending on how upgraded you want it. Um, to the spark, the level 3 spark is very much just a cockpit, a generator, a fuel tank, and some of the little green hover engines will cost you 100. That'll get you around very quickly and very easily, it's very nice, but by spending a little bit extra time uh, getting this, there's more resources here, you can get airborne, and I think that's totally worth it. I think um, spending the resources on something like a little hover vessel that could be spent on um, a, a, an SV is just a bit crazy but that's me it's entirely up to you how you play I'm going to concentrate on getting in the bolt my go to little starter SV it's a beast anyway so this is pretty much going to be me for a little while while I gather these resources um, the air the oxygen makers over there will produce oxygen so hopefully we won't asphyxiate and we've got loads of energy bars producing because of the vast quantities of plant protein around here we're not going to starve and i'm just going to go around and gather a bunch of resources out of this area now don't forget as well that you can actually resource harvest the trees um, and they will give you wood logs and wood logs will turn into plant fiber and then into biofuel so uh, you'll definitely get a lot more plant fiber out of wood logs than you will going around picking up those little white flowers. The white flowers are useful when there ain't no trees about, but uh, as soon as you find some trees, diggy diggy them. Uh, inventory is full, so we have to head back here. If you're playing with weights and volumes off, you can just stay out until every slot is full and then and come back and do this. Um, but I've had to come back and, and, and we'll do this now, which is fine. Uh, Let's pop these things in there as well. Okay, so we've got a bit more plant fiber. There was also some logs there as well. I'm going to take these out because they're no longer needed for carbon substrate recipes. So we're going to just dedicate this guy to making uh, biofuel. And, and here we go. Look, this guy is still working away. Even more bottles of oxygen now, which is good because we're about 45 air. There we go. Lovely stuff. Right. Now then, uh, this guy has got some iron, copper, silicon ore that we've picked up, as well as some crushed stone. And we do need about, what was it, 285 carbon. So if I just line up as much carbon substrate as it can do, as much, sorry, not iron ore, as much iron ingots, um, copper and silicon ingots, then it will do as much. It's going to use all the crushed stone first the carbon substrate, then it will eat up the iron. The reason I've done carbon substrate first is because if you line up the iron ingots like I've done there, I was just like bang out a hundred 
it won't do 100 it'll do like five but um what the constructor will try and do is turn the crushed stone into iron ore so it can produce more ingots whereas i want to use the crushed stone to make the carbon substrate so let's use up all the crushed stone first of all making carbon substrate that way it cannot use the crushed stone to make iron ore copper ore silicon ore and we can just line up rather than trying to figure out math how many how many ingots we can make out of that match or we just bang hold control click on it line up a hundred and let it go all right so while that's doing that let's get back out there it is very much nighttime now and uh, as you can see our little suit light is doing fine we can use the little torch it does do a, a, a better job it's much brighter but uh, one of the things about landing on skillion like i said you get a suit we don't get that on a kua or masperon um Yes, we don't have air, but we have that light during the night, and that is bloody useful. Another thing I should mention as well is that I, I'm continuously picking up plants. And um, what that does is gives you experience points. So you, can, uh, you can't really see because my face is in the way, but there's um, XP points every now and again coming up for everything that I sort of pick up. And it's quite important if you're doing the sort of route that I'm doing with going straight for an SV, it's important to get as much XP as you're gathering the resources as possible because you need to be level 7 in order to um, unlock an SV because the thrusters, I think, are level 7 uh, in, in the tech tree here. The, the small ones are level 5, but the medium ones that I've got on the bolt are level 7. Fortunately, we're already level um, 6, so we only got one level to go, and I think we're going to get that no problem just by picking plants and harvesting the rocks that we need for the SV in the first place. Other thing that I am very aware of at the moment is my radiation. Being on Skillion here... Ooh, bloody hell, that's a big drop. Uh, being on Skillion here, we have to be very aware of the radiation. It is a constant reminder, is that sort of... Um, clicking noise tells us we are in radioactive surroundings so uh, we need to keep an eye on it and the, the right hand side there under our minimap we're at 0.8 rads there's three radiations in the environment and three radiations in a suit at the moment and we have 0.8 radiations within our body fortunately we already have some medicines to help us with that minus, minus one radiation and it treats radiation burns so we can reduce our radiation with this ointment we can then do the same uh, with this pill but that does a minus three radiations and then there's the radiation immunity shot when all else fails this will give us 120 seconds of immunity from radiation this is the we don't want to be using that one ideally um this one is useless against radiation we need the yellow one but we've got two ointments right now so i'm gonna wait until we hit point nine which will be any second now, and then we're going to use that ointment. Bingo! There's level 7. So we have secured the level we need to bring the bolt in. Now it's just a case of getting the resources I need. Getting cold! Holy oh, crap, there's minus 13 out here. This is a... This is a... This is an interesting development. Uh... Yeah, I didn't see this one coming on a desert planet, I've got to be honest, which is a bit silly of me, because obviously it's a desert. It's very bloody cold at night. Okay, um, we're going to have to head back and try and make the base airtight. I suppose the other thing is I can just do this. <laughs> and sleep until the day, and then it's warmer. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Jobs are good. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Although my stats are looking pretty alarmingly low right now. But there we go. Survival 101. Just skip skip over the bits that are too hard. <laughs> nah. Don't worry about it. It's a bit cold. Fine. Sleep it off. <laughs> Point 0.9 rads. Let's use our, our gooey stuff. There we go. Oh, we've just zeroed our radiation. The other way of doing that is actually build a shower uh, using uh, deco blocks and then um, you, you can wash the radiation off that way. 
Get a bit hungry. Let's eat some of our 75 energy bars. <laughs> let's get another 100 lined up. Let's just go. So much food here. Amazing. All right, our uh, dudes have run out of fuel now, but we've got 12 oxygen bottles there, which is fantastic. That should fill us all the way up and have some left over. Bingo, look at that. And uh, we should have a hundred. Nice! Yeah, that'll keep us going for a little while. We're so full at the moment, we actually can carry one. Let's pop all this stuff here into uh, the constructor. And uh, we get it. we're starting to see food spoil now because it's been in there so long that the perish times have run out and these constructors don't hold them, uh, hold the uh, the perish times very well. So things like mushrooms and whatnot, um, I suppose really we should be turning that into the antibiotic ointment, uh, which requires plant fibers, plant protein, sorry plant protein so we have do have some and then we don't need to make any more so let's try and save as many mushrooms as we can and get them turned into something useful a herbal leaves and plant protein as well for this antibiotic ointment which is very useful as well uh we don't need it yet but you know it, it, we will do we will do and then we're going to do the same thing again we've got 103 carbon substrate uh sorry let's put this stuff in here so we can actually see what we're dealing with we have 134 carbon substrate 20 copper, 20 silicon, 50 iron. So we're still quite a ways off. So let's go um, again with the same routines. Try and get this to produce as many ingots as we can. Bear in mind that, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure basically scavenging rocks off of uh, off the surface here is going to do it. The amount of resources that we need. If, if after each full kind of backpack load, we only end up with 20, 20 and 50. Uh, <laughs> and may need to re-strategize here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's um, let's put some fuel in these guys and get these working again. Maybe we should um, perhaps prioritize um, getting this base up and running to an extent. Look at that. Full freaking wacky doodle. Love that. Um, and you can produce another bunch. Yes, you can. Lovely stuff. Okay, so... We could probably get a little hover bike and it would be quicker to go around these little points and explore them. Looking at how the SV is, <laughs> it's a little unaffordable off of surface rocks. We're going to need to find uh, deposits, I think. But the only deposits here are Neo Promethean and Carbon? What? What the hell are we supposed to get off this freaking rock? We're going to have to salvage our way off of this rock. This is crazy. Okay, the bolt isn't going to do it then because the bolt is not equipped with a, a warp drive, I remember. It hasn't got a space for a warp drive. Um, but there is one. There's the Mark VI Nightshade. The problem is it's even more expensive. <laughs> 237 carbon substrate, 228 iron, 226 copper, and 168 silicon. Poof. All right, I think we might need to slow down our expectation, guys. Um, now, the great thing about the Nightshade Mark VI is that it's basically got the same equipment as the Bolt, but there is a there's a space in the back for a warp drive. Now, there's a space in the back for a shield generator. <laughs> None of it's there, but you can upgrade it to it later. Uh, in terms of mobility, mobile oxygen, and stuff like that, while we try and secure this amount of resources, then I think it is time to revisit a very old friend. Oh, it's been so long since I've used the spark. Oh, it's brilliant. Okay. Uh, let's bring that in then. I think we've got enough resources. Are you done, are you? Uh, I think we may be just a little short, but we should have enough resources to bring the spark in. Let's do it. So... Uh, I'm going to use exact amounts because uh, the resources are so sort of precious at the moment that we need them to build up the base and stuff like that. So only 18 iron ingots. If you grab a stack and then right click into the box here, you can add them individually. Uh, we're going to need more silicon and copper though. We've only got about half what we need for that. So there we go. We just wait for the silicon and copper here to complete. And we should have 
a little hover vessel. Um, and then we can check out things like this collection point here and find out what else is around. Because, I mean, I'm hitting my detector right now and nothing is coming up at all. Nothing at all. All right. Now, in terms of the base, yeah, what we can do, and again, once we figure out what kind of resources are left over, uh, we need to seal this this place up so that we can use the oxygen ventilator that's built in. This will pressurize this room once it's sealed and um, you know we can use tank oxygen rather than suit oxygen. It's also got two of three, well in theory you can have nine grow plots here for, for, for plants but we don't even have any seeds so I'm not going to prioritize that. There's also a bed here that you can use to sleep eight hours much like the survival tent. Um, there's a little bit of storage already here as well. So we would need to take this core out here, so we can salvage that quite easily, just salvage mode, bang. And then that gave us a bunch of components, there you go. It should be enough to build our own core that we'll need in order to then use it. We'll then need a solar capacitor so we can power the place. Um, so I'll line that up as well, I'm a little bit nervous about lining this stuff up, but... Um, once we got power, we can get a fridge. That will stop all the food stuffs from spoiling. As long as we can keep it powered, of course. And then, in order to seal the breach, uh, we can build a couple of carbon blocks. Or steel blocks. Or even wooden blocks. Will do. Fill in those two holes. We can then fill the oxygen tank that was at the back of the base with some of our, our oxygen that we've produced. And this place will be powered and... Um, have life support. Now, one solar panel on this thing, I'm not sure, is going to be enough to keep it going very long. Uh, but we can produce more solar panels, panels, smaller variants at least anyway. And, and so we can attach a few of those as well. So right now, we've just got to wait for these resources to finish. Alright, so the resources are done, including our core and our solar capacitor. Now, at the moment, we... They're light enough that we can just carry them. Um, but later on, we will need to probably invest in some storage. Okay, it's night time, so <laughs> solar panel's not going to work for nothing. <laughs> but it's fine. We've also got enough resources now, I believe, that we can finish off... Um, we're going to have two copper ingots left over. That's crazy. 20 silicon, and then we go. We can start production. Now blueprint time is instant, so we can instantly bring the spark in, and here she is. She's got hips. <laughs> this is a wonderful little hover vessel. There's absolutely nothing to her. Um, my god, how old is she? She's got RCSs. Uh oh. Oh, I didn't see that. I no, no. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard! You trapped me! Betrayal! <laughs> Betrayal! Oh my god. I can't believe that. <laughs> it's just... Gotcha! <laughs> Damn you, Spark. Um, what else has it got? I can't remember. It's such an old build now. Look, it hasn't even got um, an oxygen tank. This thing will fly. It's going to be well twitchy. It might take that RCS out. Um, so it's got Wi-Fi, it's got three cargo boxes, a bunch of ground repulsors, um, large fuel tank, large generator. Yeah, she's a beaut. She's a beaut. Right, so what I do need to do is put some oxygen tanks on her, so we can get them building. There they are, we just need one. Um, and that will mean that we can have O2 actually in the vehicle rather than relying on our suit oxygen all the time. <laughs> it's a freaking hole in the ground I've had to build here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Alright, let's fuel her up. And... I'm going to use most of this. Oh, bingo, look at that. Yes. Oh, she's on. She's on, but it's dark, of course. Oh my god, this thing is crazy. Oh, I'm upside down. Okay. Yep. No, I need to take the RCS out. <laughs> oh, bless you. You silly old machine. Right, 
I'm going to try and yammer up against the wall here. So I can get to her underbelly without getting trapped. <laughs> Problem is, without a multi tool, right? I got salvage mode only. This RCS. Here. How old this build is. It's got a bloody RCS in it. Um, it's only going to give me components back. Alright. That's fine. We've got an oxygen tank now. And we can slap it to do that in there. That. Well, the great thing about the spark is you can pretty much, it's so simple, you can just tear it apart and just fit it with whatever you need to fit it with. Um, one of the things I'm thinking we need to fit it with right now is a freaking headlight. <laughs> Honestly, it's got no lighting. Um, let's have a little look. F3, hover vessel. Or is it a misc thing, the headlights? Because it goes on all builds. It goes on all builds. So which build does it come under? Spotlight. There it is. Then we can get a spotlight. Please. Yes, we can. Lovely. There it is. Uh, put that on our bar. We just need to take this block out here. And then... <laughs> <laughs> it looks so silly. <laughs> it's so silly. What is that? Is that the sh that is the bloody cockpit, isn't it? Okay, well that's just hideously horrible, ugly, and nasty. Um, <laughs> it's terrible. I will not accept it. I will not accept it. The problem is, if I replace the front two blocks there, say um, I take out you and you, and I replace you with. Um, the obvious candidates, these guys. I can't texture you! <laughs> you still look ridiculous. <laughs> I fell in a hole. <laughs> Whatever, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, the good news is we can put oxygen in the tank. We can put more oxygen in the tank with oh, 27 bottles. Are you having an absolute laugh right now? Oh, we are, we're done. We're finished. We completed the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we won. We have won. <laughs> this is just... This is nothing. There's nothing left. Not even... Nothing can defeat us now. This is amazing. We have all the air. We... Literally all the air is ours. Okay. Um, ten spare bottles. Five emergency bottles. We've got... Meds. I accidentally and stupidly took the... Took half a stack off of the output and put it on my bar. So the, the half of these are probably going to spoil. But there we <laughs> It looks so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so dumb, but it has it has a good headlight now, so we can see where we're going. And we have a hover vessel, yay! And as you can see, we have the O2 icon is lit up. Look how freaking fast this thing is! It's crazy. It's so responsive. <laughs> it's just instant. Zip, zip, zip. There's absolutely no lag time between left, right, forward, backwards, or anything. It is crazy. Um, but there we go. We have a hover vessel. We are mobile, and uh, instead of starting the video in the dark, I'm going to end the video in the dark, ladies and gentlemen. Day one! Oh, well, probably three by now, I suppose, as far as the game is concerned. But we have our hover vessel. We have a little base. It's uh, We're going to fix this up very soon, and we're going to start exploring in the next episode. That is going to be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.